and every bud. You are a Good morning, everybody. You already know what. Idaho state law makes it illegal for a man to give his sweetheart a box of candy weighing less than 50 pounds. Free Julian is on now. Jail the guilty is dead. Fight for his and your human rights. Peace. Circular one, drug sake one. By Claudia Latour and Martin Sonnevorn. Assange, second edition, revised and updated. Now even more depressing. Smile. Welcome to this free, horrible audiobook version. Please enjoy. Free Assange, note he is innocent. Although you probably did not get that news. Only the fake allegations to jail him via lobbyists. Listen. Hello children. Today we'll do chapter 18 and 19. Yay. Bert, du hast mir versprochen du machst ein Kapitel und kommst wieder ins Bett. Okay, true. Let's find a compromise. We'll speed up today a bit and only have one intermission. Meinten Sie Missionarstellung? Exactly. Excellent. Let's go, kids. Yikes. Now chapter 18. As promised, with Mr. Cleese. Mr. Cleese is on a quick business trip with Anna. So I take over for now. Fine by me. What do you think, Anna? Fine. Na dann, ab dafür. Lasst jucken. Oh ja, ab geht's. Two presidents of the USA, one Europe and Lord Justice Holroyd, who to thank for the final act, for now, of this highly artificial legal soap opera is clear. You there are three of them. Greetings go out. First, the boob from the White House, Donald Trump and Joe Biden. The one had not only given the green light to the impeachment of Assange, but on his last few feet in office, he shot out all available guns to leave the world in an even worse state than it already was than it already was. In his last weeks in the Oval Office, Trump put on his widest mole grin to quickly carry out a few more executions, or at least to or at least order, 13 in Indiana alone which was three times more than in the previous 60 years. Pardon a few convicted felon buddies Manafort et al. And finally, exactly two days before the arrival of the Rebellists, to get the appeal against Assange to get underway, the other had gone out of his way to quickly satisfy the glorified expectations of European transatlanticists with superficially mannered rhetoric. In his inaugural speech he had stutteringly explained to them that America was finally back. Hooray. And quickly the very last thing he could remember about the keywords justice and freedom. And then brushlessly continued the political guidelines of the idiot before him the political guidelines of the idiot before him. Including this betrayal of democratic principles. Which began with the merciless hunt for Assange from the very beginning. Of course, if you look even closer, it's all, it's worse, as usual. Needless to say, Biden has not advanced a female agenda here, and elsewhere, but his own, 
As recently as 2011 Vice President, especially for Assange he had used the terrorist terrorist designation high tech terrorist, which is clearly incompatible with the reflection horizon of all idiots before, after and next to him and next to him. Fatty Pompeo's formula of the hostile non-state intelligence service, as well as Biden's dictum, allow us to look much deeper than we would have liked look much deeper than transatlanticists are usually able to see transatlanticists can usually see. Until Joe Biden came along, it was it was self-evident that a publicist is nothing but, a publicist nothing but, a publicist. When he publishes evidence of crimes committed by members of government organizations, then as a politician you have to draw your you have to draw your own simple conclusions. At best, at best, if you are still a democrat, that crimes committed should be punished and, the, perpetrators charged. The idea of branding the journalist as a homicidal terrorist instead and to criminalize the journalist who uses something as with something as dangerous to the public as a pencil, a printing press or, god forbid, the internet has never been done in constitutional states, as far as we remember, in constitutional states, as far as we can remember, until Joe Biden came along. Hopefully it does not need to be mentioned separately, that the workflow of such reality distorting frame setting is one of the most dimensionally stable and at the same time transparent meshes of flawless states of injustice. It simply consists in giving anyone who somehow stands in the way of a smooth exercise of power, as repulsive as possible, label on the lapel, for example young liberals, smiley, in order to legitimize the which is what usually follows. If a politician bluntly calls a journalist a terrorist, he marks him in a straight semantic line straight semantic line, and visible for all to see, as visible to all, as a righteous person. With a terrorist one may do with a terrorist what is forbidden with journalists in constitutional states, one may monitor him, spy on him, torture them psychologically and physically, even poison them, kidnap them, murder them and execute them. All things that the US intelligence community and the White White House actually did and all planned to do with Assange, planned. What it might mean for you a US if a Joe Biden, whose progressive pension of spirit is hailed is hailed by a world that routinely rumbles at him. Still considers the work of a publicist to be terrorism still considers the work of a publicist to be terrorism. And he must. Otherwise he would have withdrawn the appeal. We have no way of knowing for certain. You should know that not only all the conservatives, social democrats, liberals and greens that you will ever vote for, in the expectation of a more perfect world, will stand at his side in the strongest possible terms. But also, of course, your greatest German ace so far in Brussels, Ms. von der Leyen. No meeting of the members of the European Council, this really most decisive body of the EU, without the servile transatlantic tin pot drama, and pioneer of the SMS based non transparency, CF the Pfizer SMS, did not spend several hours with Biden beforehand with Biden in advance. We are not saying anything more about this now. The geostrategic autonomy that this concrete faced on Tian had promised us, we had imagined differently. Solltest du nicht an der Uni sein, Johnny? Rat, you're right, Uni. Bummer. Run. PFFFT. Film am Moment. Secondly. And at this point you already suspected. Secondly, of course, we owe the whole salad, as always, to all these imaginative, as always, to all those unimaginative whistles from Europe who, as always, can see the democratic forest for the transatlantic trees. As long as EU politicians understand nothing else by democracy than nothing but the translation of US American political phrases into their respective national languages, there will be little chance to change this. And as long as they out there expect nothing from their democracy but the serial expect nothing more from your democracy than the serial reproduction of empty signifiers on CO2 free glossy paper. Either. As long as the demand for press freedom will only be the obsolete instrument in an outdated ideological toolbox. And European European politics will be a pseudo prospective field of vision, which in reality has been reduced to the interests and deployment areas of an outdated military alliance has melted down.
as long as upright Democrats like Julian Assange are denied the political, political protections they deserve from the members of the, of the EU, individually and collectively, these European civil rights actors take their cheap phraseology in their hats. Initiated by the French left-wing party La France Insumise, 39 deputies from nine parliamentary groups in the National Assembly on 27.10.21, calling on the French government to grant Julian Assange immediate political asylum. The motion did majority, but it has once again reminded the French public of the outrageousness of the prosecution of a journalist. Of the prosecution of a journalist. It is always interesting to see what left-wing parties in left-wing parties in Europe can sometimes achieve. Apropos. What does the German left actually do for a living? Thanks for your attention, kids. That was the second part of three of chapter 18. Was treibst du denn hier? Johnny. Just wanted to ask the same thing. Daniel, could you take over the third half? My name is Daniel. True. I'll do. Okay, 200 words per minute or so. Listen. Thirdly. And third, we have Lord Justice Holroyd to thank for the design and content of this trial. In the London High Court he sits directly opposite us all the time, and with a look last seen on Darth Vader's face. For two days, this buffoon won't say a word say anything maybe because he doesn't like it or because can't or, more likely, because he is not allowed to. He is, in fact, subaltern here, to his own surprise, but more on that later. Holroyd really will remain silent throughout, quite as if he were gagged or not there at all. Just like Assange except on the morning of trial day 2. After a few confused looks that go through the entire Holroyd takes heart, which he probably doesn't have probably doesn't have, to two shilling, like a, like a sly high school girl, to the chief lord justice, sitting next to him, who promptly reports that the high court, represented by Darth Holroyd, feels disturbed in the most sensitive way, by every one of these people who dare to look not at his judicial sanctity, but occasionally at their their profane mobile phones. The citizenry present may immediately cease to look at anything other than a judge other than a judge. We would be happy to say the same to Holroyd, who has so far spent his working hours exclusively without any perceptible pause for breath or emotion at the ahistorical screen set up in front of him screen set up in front of him. Listen. My lord, the bearers of these inalienable civil rights out there, represented by us, feel very disturbed, and by this Lord Vader here who, for days now, not at the democratic sovereign, but at his own private, comical television. Our guess, by the way, is zombies versus plants, or solitaire, and we wish him peck from the bottom of our hearts. May the undead on his screen give him a good beating. Holroyd is known for his merciless harshness, coupled with a blatant lack of empathy lack of empathy. It is probably strictly forbidden to say or write or think anything bad about him at all. At any time Holborn could pull some dusty colonial era paragraph out of his frock, which he could sew and twist it until, in the end, it simply forbids everything he looks like it, at least, if Assange and his father and his fiance and, and his fiance and his comrades in. Arms and WikiLeaks and the whole world public are finally tortured with an appeal after 11 years with an appeal procedure in which it is mainly about the mainly about the private medical details of Assange's private medical details and his mental condition, then we really have no one else to thank, according to the prevailing internal legal logic than his sourpuss lordship here. When the preliminary hearing for the present appeal was held on the 11th of August, 2021, Holborn was, arguably, still speaking, although in retrospect one can Holborn was still speaking, although in retrospect one wishes he had he would have been better off keeping quiet then too. As recently as August, the case was case had been assigned to a pair of judges under his leadership. He was joined by a junior judge, Justice Dame Judith Justice Dame Judith Farby, who followed the proceedings silently, as quiet as a mouse, as, then still, presiding judge. Holborn had dared to hear a case brought by Chief Justice Jonathan Swift, we recall, only a month earlier, with fatal consequences for all our psyches, Justice Swift had, when accepted the case for hearing in July, only three of the total of five grounds for appeal put forward by the US, purely legal and formalistic, relating at most, to the district court's interpretation of individual legal provisions by the district court, all the agonizing questions of low level, Kitchen psychology, on the other hand, all the clinical pictures, depressions, suicidal intentions, all the expert opinions and their questioning had been quite explicitly excluded by Swift. One notices immediately, a man of honor, 
for this appeal here could have been so beautifully, dryly, technical and deadly dull as any other standard as any other standard court hearing. In any case, it's very different from the failed reenactment of this early Hitchcock classic here. What we had to see, here and not here for two days was entirely due to Holboin. Holboin. Guilty. For it was he who allowed the two previously the two previously excluded grounds of appeal and and allowed the United States to extend the appeal process to the medical psychological grounds grounds. Of which you have just had a taste you have just had a taste of. Hat jemand Bird gesehen? Oh mein Gott, Bird, was haben sie dir angetan? Lass dich streicheln. I love it when a plan comes together. Honey, now chapter 19 for the kids. I can't await chapter 19 of Circular One. Anna. Daniel, es geht mir genauso. Und danach gibt's Elton John, habe ich munkeln hören. Affirmative, I know IT all. Oh, Wi-Fi wife, you, you. Let's listen to chapter 19. I the Judicial think you can Empire get out. strikes back oh. one week before the start of the main hearing in October 2021. Suddenly and for reasons that are not reasons are unknown. The quiet as a mouse in the Assange case assessor was withdrawn and replaced by Lord Chief Justice Burnett, whose sovereign conduct of the trial Holroyd has had to endure silently ever since. And that might indeed be a good thing for once. Lord Ian Duncan Burnett is a knight in shining armor. If one may the, somewhat awkward, title of nobility Baron Burnett of Malden. Of Malden and the County of Essex has been conferred upon him for life, so long as he lives. So long as he does not die he lives, so long as he has not yet died. As Lord Chief Justice of England and Wales, Burnett occupies the highest highest appointable judgeship in the land, one of the most respected judges in Britain. The series of cases with which he has come into contact over the years is as impressive as it is historic. From the King's Cross Fire, 1987, to the Southall 1997, and Ladbrook Grove, 1999. Train accidents to the inquests following the death of Diana, Princess of Wales, and Dodie Al-Fayed. Really great cinema. Burnett was also involved in the overturning of the wrongful convictions of the Guildford 4 and the Maguire 7. Burnett had been involved in two serious miscarriages of justice. Eleven innocent Northern Irish and English citizens were false and English citizens were falsely accused of being terrorists and sentenced to up to 35 years imprisonment. One of Britain's biggest judicial scandals in Britain. From the Supreme Court, Burnett was promoted to the Court of Appeal as Lord Justice of Appeal at the Court of Appeal where he was in charge of extradition cases and where, here comes one rant. He corrected Lowry Love's first instance extradition order to the US by immediately revoking it, keywords, Asperger's, depression and suicidal tendencies normal humanitarian reasons, in the circle of WikiLeaks sympathizers. The, which can be dramatized from a purely narrative point of view of Justice Burnett, who, after all, had entered into these as the deus ex machina in a tragedy of antiquity ancient tragedy, is seen as a good omen. And we too of course want to believe that this is something good the resolution of a soul crushing conflict through the courageous by the courageous intervention of blind goddesses of justice of justice, who finally give the long, awaited final the longed for final turn of events. Hope as a principle and optimism as a strategy, even though both, says Heiner Muller, are only due to a lack of information. The Swiss international law expert prof Dr. Nils Meltzer, on the other hand, formulates a depressing thesis. When a judge wants to base his judgment on a precedent decision then he can simply do so. In order to repeat the principle of a decision that has already been made, one does not need the judge who originally made it. This judge, according to Meltzer, is needed in a case only to reverse the principle of a precedent decision. The only one to be overruled by from the legal standard set in the Lowry Love case without being challenged is the one who originally made it, Lord Chief Justice Burnett himself. Was denn nun schon wieder, Bird? I overslept the Elton John appearance. Ach, Dummerchen, der kommt doch jetzt. Aber nur ein Titel. Der letzte von Martman Across the Water. Weiß ich doch, sei jetzt still. And now that it's all over, the birds can nest again. I'll only snow when the sun comes out. I'll shine only when it starts to rain. 
And if you want a drink, just squeeze my hand. And wine will flow into the land. And feed my lambs. For I am a mirror. I can reflect the moon. I will write songs for you. I'll be your silver spoon. I'm I sound sorry a I took spoon. your time. Mr. Cleese. I am the poem that now, doesn't rhyme. Daniel, just turn back the page. I'll waste away, I'll waste away. I'll waste away, I'll waste away. I'll waste away, I'll waste away. Wasted. The end. Now free Assange. Wow. Für einen Computersänger klang das toll. Komm, wir gehen wieder ins Bett. Bird. Johnny. Thank you. You made it. Happy end. See you soon. The Enter Trainer.
Bolivia. La 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 la. Bambuliyo. Wow. <laughs>